Welcome to What's New in Python 3.12. My name is Christopher, and I will be your guide. In order to have this course released simultaneously with Python 3.12, testing in the course was done with Release Candidate 2. This should defect anything described as release candidates are feature complete. For some time now, Python has been on a yearly release schedule, and 2023's release is Python 3.12. Like with every release, a bunch of improvements have been made. 3.12's focus has mostly been internal, but there's a little bit for everyone. You'll find some changes to f-strings, even more improvements to error messages, a few new features in the standard library, some functions and some enums, additions to the static typing framework, and as I mentioned, a whole bunch going on internally, some of which improves the performance, and some of which is laying the groundwork for future improvements. So let's waste no more time. Dive into the first new feature, a change to how f-strings are parsed. In the previous lesson, I gave a quick overview of the course. In this lesson, I am going to talk about improvements made in Python 3.12 to f-strings. I guess I'm just getting old. It seems like not that long ago I adopted f-strings in my code, but it turns out they've been around since Python 3.6. If you haven't used them before, they're an improvement over C-style parameterized strings, as well as the format function, which somehow I just never got around to adopting. When f-strings were added to Python, the base code of the existing parser wasn't capable of parsing them, so a separate parser was added explicitly for their case. As a result, they technically weren't part of the official grammar. Python 3.9 converted to a more powerful parser, called the peg. It's the magic behind a lot of the goodness you've seen in the last couple of versions, especially with error message improvements. The newer parser is perfectly capable of parsing f-strings, so in Python 3.12, the f-string parsing was re-implemented to use the peg. For the core maintainers, this is a big advantage. It means the old secondary parsing code can be removed. A byproduct of the new parser is some former restrictions on f-strings have been lifted. Let's head off to the REPL, and I'll show you the new changes. To demonstrate the new stuff, I'm going to compare and contrast 3.11 with 3.12. The top window will have 3.11, while the bottom window will have 3.12. The first change I'm going to talk about is how quotes work inside of an f-string. Let me just create a dict here. And in order to reference a value from the dict inside an f-string, I need to use a nested quote. In 3.11, the outer and inner quotes have to be different, following the same rules as other kinds of strings. If I try to use the same kind of quote inside, it falls down. This restriction was there because the old f-strings were identified as strings by the lexer, then passed to the custom parser for further processing. They had to be valid strings or the lexer would complain. This restriction is gone in 3.12. Same dict. The old way still works. And the new way is also allowed. Frankly, I'm not sure if I like this. I get that it can be helpful with very complicated f-strings, but I'm so accustomed to mentally scanning a string that this looks weird to me. Maybe I'll get used to it. It also means the IDEs and editors out there are going to need to have their tokenization updated. Otherwise, the syntax highlighting is going to be wrong in this case. Several of my colleagues are already struggling with linters, that are flagging these kinds of problems. The next restriction lifted has to do with how backslashes work. Here I've made a list of words by splitting a string. I can join them with a new line. But I can't do that inside of an F string. Backslash characters were not allowed inside an f-string expression. 
To accomplish what I'm attempting here, you need to do it as two different steps. Now on the 312 side, this restriction has been lifted. Same words. And the join. And now I can join inside the F string. Again, not sure this is something I'm ever going to do. In fact, I wasn't aware this was even a restriction. I'd never tried it before. But it does mean the expression portion of an F string is now more consistent with expressions in the language. F strings can be multiline using triple quotes. But the expression portion isn't allowed to have comments. This is now possible in 312. This one I like. The introduction of the peg parser has enabled a vast improvement in syntax errors in Python. I'd say it was actually my favorite feature of both Python 3.10 and 3.11, definitely the one I used the most. More improvements have been done in 3.12, which I'll cover later, but while I'm here, let me show you an f-string specific one. That error is a bit vague. It tells you there's an error, but not really what it is. Now in 3.12 land, you get the same kind of error as you'd get on a problematic expression outside of an f-string. This is possible because the same parser is now being used in both places. The last thing to show you is a new ability to nest f-strings. Not sure I can come up with a use case for this, but, well, if you want to, you can do it now. I mentioned that error messages have been improving since the introduction of the peg parser. That trend continues in Python 3.12. I'll show you some more improvements in the next lesson. In the previous lesson, I talked about the improvements to f-strings. In this lesson, I'll show you better arrows. Did you mean errors? I mentioned the addition of the peg parser in Python 3.9. Peg has allowed more descriptive error messages, including did you mean semantics? For example, if you misspell something, it tries to guess what you meant and tell you about it. Python 3.12 has added more error improvements. The contents of the standard library have now been added to the source of guesses for the did you mean semantics, as well as the members of a class. Evidently, a common error during importation is to get the from module import name syntax in the wrong order. Rather than a plain syntax error, you now get a hint as to the correct way around. And the contents of a module themselves are now in the guest list. So if you spell something in the imported module incorrectly, it will show in the did you mean error. Let's go write some broken code and see the errors. I'm in a Python 3.12 REPL here. Let me start by showing you something that worked before 3.12. Built-ins like print were in the guess list for the did you mean code. Compare pint with Davis. Davis isn't close to anything, so it doesn't get a did you mean to go with it. Whereas pint is close to print, and so it does. The ability to look for these near matches in the built-ins module was added in Python 3.10. Let me show you the built-ins. There's a lot there. 
and you can see that print is inside of it. In addition to looking in built-ins, Python 3.12 now looks in the standard library. As I haven't imported math yet, but it is part of the standard library, I get the did you mean message. If I try that with Miles, I just get a plain style error instead. It isn't close enough to anything in the guest list to get a did you mean. Like with built-ins, you can see everything in the standard library. This time, instead of using a module directly though, you use the standard lib module names member of the sys module. Which of course, it finds math inside. Just for giggles, let's look at all of them. That's even worse than built-ins. Similar guess list stuff has been added to the inside of classes, with the members of the class now working with did you mean style errors. Consider my talker class. Inside the say method, I use message, which doesn't actually exist. I probably mean the class member self.message. And now the error gives me that hint. Python's 310 guest list included everything in the local scope but didn't work with self inside of a class. This actually created a bit of a corner case when there was something in the local scope with a similar name to something in a class. It would, did you mean, on the global variable, possibly pointing you at the wrong thing. Python 3.12 has fixed this by adding class context, and the class scope is checked first, fixing this potentially misleading error caused by the error message. As I mentioned in the intro, a common mistake is to get the order of the from import syntax wrong. This is particularly easy for multi-language coders as other programming languages do this differently. Python 3.12 explicitly looks for this kind of problem and instead of giving a generic syntax error, it now gives you a bit of a hint. The did you mean feature has been added to the underlying import code as well. If I try to import something from a module that isn't there, it checks the module's contents for near-named things and gives you a hint. Of course, I meant cosine. Sorry, I'll leave now. Okay, maybe I won't leave. I'll just head to the next lesson, which is about a few small additions to three different standard library modules. <laughs>